One of the most powerful tools in the 2016 election were memes used by Trump supporters to convey ideas in concise and enjoyable ways, and that allowed certain ideas to propagate. Well, now we are seeing that Instagram's fact-checking program is killing memes. Now you can think of all the conspiracy theories you like about how they're coming for our memes to shut it down because people are using it to spread messages. But I think we're seeing something much more dangerous. There's a misunderstanding as to what facts and truth really, really are. But also what we're seeing from this fact checking of memes, they really believe everyone is stupid. And this might actually prove that there are too many stupid people and that I don't know how to solve. So here's what I want to do for this morning's segment. I want, to, I want to show you what's going on with memes because I'll tell you this. You can clearly see that many of these memes are political. They're being said to be fake. It's fake news. Yeah, they're jokes. We understand they're fake. But here's what I want to show you. You see, the Daily Wire recently got downgraded by NewsGuard. For those that aren't familiar, NewsGuard is a third party extension and it's a group of journalists, it's a company, and they basically fact check news organizations to determine whether or not they are credible. Well, the Daily Wire got downgraded, but BuzzFeed News is perfect across the board. I don't completely disagree, but I want to prove to you how the establishment doesn't actually have facts on their side. They claim to because they don't actually do the work to figure out what's real or not. The end result is that third party fact checking organizations are hired by companies like Facebook or not hired, but given the keys to the castle who then come in and say your memes are fake or your news is fake, even when they themselves publish contradictory information. First, here's what they say over at Reclaim the Net, which mind you is not rated by NewsGuard. Instagram was once the best place, best places for sharing and enjoying memes. However, earlier this year, Instagram mass purged over 30 popular meme pages and reduced the circulation of memes on the platform. Now with the recent mass rollout of its fact checking program, Instagram has started to slowly kill off the remaining memes by hiding many of them behind a false information notice. As we reported previously, this noticed, this notice was used to censor a meme of climate activist Greta Thunberg, which shows her eating on a train while hungry African children look out from out, <laughs> look, look on from outside the train window. It, I'm sorry, if, if, if somebody can't tell this photo is fake, we've got different problems. Just because people don't realize it's obviously fake and she's not riding a train through an African village, okay? You can't censor, block it, or tell, like, it, they're, they're seriously fact-checking jokes at this point. Well, what are we supposed to do if we can't make a joke because some people are too stupid to realize it's a joke? I don't know what to tell you, man. But I will point out while we're here. Have you noticed, Ms. Thunberg, the climate change activist, using single-use plastic bins and single-use plastic bags? And uh, that looks like paper. Anyway, I'm being a bit of a, a jerk on this one. They say, however, this Thunberg meme is just one of many that has been fact-checked, blurred out, and hidden behind a notice on Instagram since the program was introduced on December 18th. Now, I find this interesting, but I do have something scarier for you. Let me show you some of these images. What you can see here is that this person, uh, Lush Sucks on Instagram, posted a meme. It is blocked, it is blurred out, and it says false information reviewed by independent fact-checkers. And the, the reason is they say there is no evidence that Hillary Clinton killed Jeffrey Epstein. Why? Because it was a joke. It was a joke. Bush says, I killed Saddam Hussein. Then Obama says, I killed Osama bin Laden. Then Trump says, I killed Baghdadi. And then Hillary Clinton says she killed Epstein. It's a joke. It's supposed to be fun. Ha 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 ha. They actually blurred that out. They are fact checking jokes because, you know what? I don't know, man. I'm sure some people will say it's because they know that these memes make people laugh and it creates an in-group of people more likely to support Donald Trump. But let me show you how this becomes more nefarious. Take a look at this post. This is a post that, uh, so uh, what you're seeing is a test post I made on November 18th, where I basically copied uh, uh, what Prager University had posted to Facebook. PragerU is a conservative YouTube channel and, and they do Instagram and social media. They, PragerU posted on Twitter, did you know in 2006, Hillary Clinton voted for a fence on the Mexican border? So did Barack Obama and Chuck Schumer and 23 other Democrats. Now a border wall is considered racist. Why is the left shifted so far on the issue of immigration? 
So I basically took what they said and as a test reposted, because here's what happened. When PragerU posted this image, it was, it was blurred out. Let me show you what it looks like. You can see partly false information. So you can't actually read what they said. The average person will see that and say, whoa, fake news, right? The reality is it was completely true information. When they fact-checked PragerU, underneath their post, they linked to a story from PolitiFact that says half true. Did top Democrats vote for a border wall in 2006? Hold on a second. Why would Facebook link a story asking whether they voted for a border wall if PragerU said they voted for a border fence? Those are different things. Now, you might be saying, Tim, you're playing semantics. We know PragerU is wrong. Actually, not true. The PolitiFact article that was linked actually says they voted for a border fence. Unfortunately, I guess for the fact checkers over at Facebook, PragerU is being a bit concise. They were saying they voted for a fence. So why is a wall racist? Like if, if the argument is a fence isn't racist, what makes a wall racist? Legitimate question. So I posted this. This post is part of a test and will quote PragerU. So tell us why a border wall is now racist. Uh, and I posted the source. Everything in the PragerU a statement from Twitter was sourced by PolitiFact. Guess what happened? Facebook actually took down this post, or I should say they soft blocked it. They soft censored it, putting up an image saying this is false information on my post, even though I included the source, their own source, which confirms all of that information. This is where it becomes dangerous when we have fact checkers trying to determine what is true and what isn't, because the fact checkers are just as bad as any other person. More importantly, I mean, if someone's going to make a joke and you're going to fact check it, we got serious problems. So, you know, some people might say it's politically biased and politically motivated. And I think it's not so much that the system was built to be biased, but that these journalists are in fact biased and I can prove it. And I'm going to take some swipes at you, NewsGuard, because y'all make too many mistakes. Now, first, let me, let me tell everybody, I only use NewsGuard approved sources with rare exception. There may be an outlet with a story that is verifiable, and because they're the original source, I'll use it. And typically when I do, I'll say, keeping in mind, NewsGuard rates this negatively. The reason I do this is because if the biased left-wing journalists are saying this source is credible, well, then you can't get mad at me for using them because they have in the past. NewsGuard says Fox News is credible. The Daily Caller is credible. The Daily Mail is credible. I make sure that if, if and when NewsGuard takes someone off their credibility list, I stop using them. Even though I recognize NewsGuard is wrong, it's kind of, a, okay, here, here's the way I put it. Your journalists are biased. So if I use your biased journalists and find information that makes, that, that proves, you know, certain things, you can't accuse me of pushing lies or conspiracy theories because I'm using the same journalists everybody else's, right? Check this out. We can see NewsGuard recently downranked the Daily Wire. They did an update. Let me actually, so you can see here, it says, does not repeatedly publish false content, but when it comes to gathering and presenting information responsibly, correcting and clarifying errors, handling the difference between news and opinion responsibly, avoiding deceptive headlines, disclosing ownership, and revealing who's in charge, they get X's across the board, which gives the site a red exclamation point, meaning proceed with caution. This website severely violates basic standards of credibility and transparency. Uh, the, Daily, the Daily Wire, I would, I would say this is an, an absolutely incorrect assessment of The Daily Wire, but you know what? For the sake of, of erring on the side of, you can't call me wrong if I'm using your sources, I have now phased out using Daily Wire for my, for, for my videos. So the Daily Wire, you may be upset about this and you might want to reach out, but let me show you this. I actually think the Daily Wire tends to be credible. There are some heavy criticisms I'm absolutely in agreement with uh, from NewsGuard. So they've said this at the bottom, following a new review of content on Daily Wire. Actually, hold on, I'm sorry. If you're not familiar, the Daily Wire is Ben Shapiro's news outlet. It's primarily a commentator and conservative uh, aggregation of news. They say this, following a new review of content on Daily Wire, NewsGuard updated this nutrition label on December 17th, 2019 to reflect its determination that contrary to an earlier version of this label, dailywire.com fails to meet NewsGuard's standard for gathering and presenting information responsibly, for avoiding deceptive headlines, and for clearly revealing who's in charge. Now, I want to show you why I could compile a list of why NewsGuard itself is not credible. As much as I do use it, right, for sort of a political argument. They say that right here, does not repeatedly publish false content. Thumbs up. It's got a green check mark. Okay. 
Thank you, that, thank you, thank, thank you NewsGuard, for letting me know that there are severe issues with, with Daily Wire, but at least they're not publishing false content, right? Actually, they say this, uh, credibility. However, the Daily Wire frequently publishes false and misleading information. Okay, hold on. You told me they don't do that. And then in your own content about it, you say they do do that. I got a contradiction here. NewsGuard has made a factual error. I'm sorry. This is evidence that NewsGuard has published false content. And I can also show you that NewsGuard also publishes more false content, which would stand to reason that NewsGuard itself would receive a red exclamation point for not being credible because they repeatedly publish false information. The point here is, and I, I am being a bit, you know, I don't know, hyperbolic or sarcastic in a sense, but if they, if they say they both simultaneously do and don't publish false content, then clearly something is incorrect here and they publish something false. Let me show you this. BuzzFeed News. BuzzFeed News, according to NewsGuard, is cleared across the board as credible. Does not publish false content, is, is, gathers information responsibility, responsibly. I love this one. Handles the difference between news and opinion responsibly. Thumbs up. Good job, NewsGuard. Fantastic. Thank you for letting me know that 90% that, that of the opinion pieces that appear on BuzzFeed News are in fact not opinion, even though they don't label them. You see, the problem here is that NewsGuard says BuzzFeed handles the difference between opinion and news responsibly. In fact, they do not. They literally don't. That is false. And I can prove it simply. Look at the headline story as of today. San Francisco spent a decade being rich, important, and hating itself. That headline is literally an opinion. Hating itself? That's not a fact. That's someone's opinion, whether or not a city hates itself. But guess what? We can open the story. It doesn't say opinion. It says BuzzFeed reporter. They're passing this off like it's a straight up news article listed as tech. It's not an opinion. It's not listed as an opinion. It's listed as a fact. And if we go back to the front page, we can see there are several opinion pieces that are not labeled as opinion because BuzzFeed, as far as I can tell, does not have that distinction. So why are we trusting our content to third party fact checkers? Seven photo stories that will challenge your view of the world. That's an opinion. I get it. It's BuzzFeed clickbait. The point is BuzzFeed gets a green check mark across the board when they publish fake news. And I'm really going to hammer it in. This one's for you, NewsGuard. BuzzFeedNews.com. They go on to talk about how BuzzFeed's reporting on the Mueller report was unparalleled. Listen, let me tell you something. Do you know what the problem is with these fact-checking organizations? If you use BuzzFeed as the standard for what is true, then yes, you will find conservative outlets are fake news because you're going to say, hey, BuzzFeed says, you know, one plus one equals three, but the Federalist says one plus one equals two. Well, BuzzFeed news is more credible. Therefore, Federalist is wrong. How do you determine what is a fact if we're trying to weigh every news organization against source material? You see the point? If BuzzFeed comes out with fake news and they do all of the time, why would they be considered to not repeatedly publish false content? What is their criteria for, for what, it, what qualifies as repeatedly? Let me tell you something. BuzzFeed published a story earlier this year about Robert Mueller saying the Mueller, I can't remember the, the exact details, but it was the, one of the rare moments that the Mueller team, uh, Robert Mueller himself, came out and said this story is not true. BuzzFeed stood by their reporting. CNN's also done the same thing. Why would we then consider BuzzFeed to be credible when the source of the story says fake news? Don't ask me. NewsGuard just determined that they're green across the board, even though they don't differentiate between news and opinion. What makes BuzzFeed news credible? I have no idea. And my understanding is in the past, they actually gave BuzzFeed an X for differentiating between news and opinion. But now I want to really drive this home because I can give you fake news from BuzzFeed more recently. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, man. I'm actually on the verge, <clears throat> excuse me, I've talked about, we're working on expanding Subverse and there's a plan for an external fact-checking entity that's going to rate, um, basically we'll, take, we'll randomly sample 100 articles, we'll fact-check them, rate them, and then do a rating based on that. It's complicated. And we've been, we've been you know, it's on a back burner, but it's on the, it's on, it's on the list of things we plan to do, legitimate fact-checking. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting a frog in my throat. Let me show you this story. BuzzFeed News reported last month, a man was stabbed to death in a fight over a Popeye's chicken sandwich. That headline is literally fake. This story is made up. 
BuzzFeed made this up. As a real journalist, you would actually go and talk to witnesses and family members to determine what really happened in this fight. And as it turns out, the fairest assessment of what this story was, was that two, that several people were at a Popeye's and it may have had to, may had to do with the fact that Popeye's had released a chicken sandwich. However, a fight broke out over someone cutting in front of other people. Some guy said, let's take it outside. The other guy pulled out a knife and stabbed the other guy. They were not fighting over a chicken sandwich. There was no shortage of a chicken sandwich. Anybody could have gotten a chicken sandwich. And a family member said he did not die fighting for a chicken sandwich. BuzzFeed wanted to publish a sensationalized, hyperbolic fake news headline to get clicks. Because apparently BuzzFeed thinks it's funny or, some, or interesting or clickbaity to make a story about two black guys fighting, over, fighting to the death over fried chicken. This story particularly was offensive to me because it is some of the most egregious fake news we've ever seen, but it also combines the left's penchant for, taking race, for, for pretending not to be racist, but pushing the most racist concepts you could ever imagine. BuzzFeed literally wrote a story that is fake, arguing that two black men fought to the death over fried chicken. That is fake news. It is fake as it comes, and it is racist, and I am disgusted by it. Yet BuzzFeed, for some reason, is told, we're told they're completely credible. So I'll do this. The Daily Wire is not perfect. They're mostly commentary. It is a criticism conservatives have received for a long time. Very, relative to, to the left, conservatives don't do journalism. They don't do on-the-ground reporting. They aggregate, and they do commentary. Daily Wire, you can criticize for this, but you know what? Honestly, the Daily Wire is allowed to create a conservative commentary website, and that should be considered when you're checking whether or not they're credible. Some of the articles that are rated as false are just hyperbole. It's not fake. It's just a conservative, you know, I don't know, being hyperbolic like everybody does. What about MSNBC? Is MSNBC going to get rated as false for all the lies they pushed for Rachel Maddow talking about Fargo in the winter and Russia shutting off the power? They don't. So here's what ends up happening. The default for these fact-checking agencies is the left. So BuzzFeed News can publish repeated false information, but because the default is the left is correct, they say, no, BuzzFeed must be credible. They don't repeat, repeat, repeatedly publish false content. But I'll tell you what, I'd be willing to bet you give me a few days and I can pull up a list of, you know, dozens of stories that are fake from BuzzFeed especially when it comes to the culture wars. There are, repeat, there are repeated articles from BuzzFeed pertaining to Count Dankula and Sargon that are so insanely misleading or false. Yet for some reason, NewsGuard's like, yeah, but BuzzFeed's okay. Even though they're basically the entire front page of the website is unlabeled opinions. Okay, maybe not, that's, that's exaggerating, right? But, but seriously, there's tons of falsely framed stories, misleading headlines, and opinions that aren't labeled as such, and that's credible. But when Daily Wire does essentially the same thing, they give them red X's across the board and even contradict themselves. So I'll tell you what, I know a lot of people are going to say, why would you bother using NewsGuard, Tim? They're biased and they have no credibility. You're right. I agree. But I'll tell you this. When I pull up a story from CNN that says something like, you know, uh, how about this? There have been, I, I believe, two CNN polls recently showing that impeachment has, is, is now failing. Opposition to impeachment is growing. You can't tell me I'm wrong if I'm using CNN uh, rated as credible by biased left-wing outlets and it's saying Trump is winning. Therein lies the big challenge for those who hate watching my videos on the left. They don't want to do it. I've seen the comments. They're like, I refuse to watch propaganda. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm citing CNN. Oh, you think CNN's propaganda? They're the ones who hate Trump and they're the ones saying Trump is winning. So therein lies the big problem. We'll take it back to the memes. Memes are jokes. Fact checkers are now stepping in and removing obvious jokes. Well, not removing, but censoring them, making it harder to see, harder to share, and negatively impacting people who make jokes. This is the world that's being developed. Biased, ignorant fact checkers who can't tell what a joke is and are trying to protect people who can from jokes. But when it comes to the actual facts, when it comes to what we really need to know about, the default is the left. I ask you this, why should BuzzFeed get green across the board? BuzzFeed should have several X's. Avoids deceptive headlines? Are you kidding me? A man was stabbed to death in a fight over a Popeye's chicken sandwich is fake news. 
you know what? I'm going to send this video to NewsGuard because y'all are biased to such an absurd degree. And you probably don't realize it, but I'll tell you this right now. If Robert Mueller comes out and says BuzzFeed is fake news, well, then you're going to have to decide who's telling the truth or not. And if BuzzFeed does fake trash like this, when family members even say it's not true, you got a serious problem. Now, look, I'll wrap this up and say this. Some of the criticisms NewsGuard has for Daily Wire, they're actually on point. The problem I have is not that they're saying Daily Wire publishes fake content. Daily Wire has published hyperbolic, falsely framed or exaggerated content. Totally think they have. Absolutely. But BuzzFeed literally does the same thing. The difference, BuzzFeed pretends it's better reporting. BuzzFeed doesn't use a, a commentary style. They make things look like they're reporting when in fact they're falsely framing stories. Case in point, a man was fighting over fried chicken. Fake news. You know why this really bothers me? I'm from Chicago. I've seen senseless violence. I grew up with senseless, senseless violence all around me. And they never care to come to our neighborhoods and tell people what's actually going on and why this stuff kind of this happens. They don't do it. But, but I'll tell you what, if BuzzFeed can find a hilariously racist narrative about black men fighting to the death over fried chicken, you better damn well believe they're going to publish that fake news, fake headline. And when I messaged Ben Smith, the editor, he stood by it. He stood by fake BS. You're getting me all riled up. So you know what? It is what it is. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCastNews. And I will see you all then.